Hello everybody and welcome to this EOS Governance Development Forum webinar on the 25th of October. So we are, things are moving very rapidly now with European Open Science Cloud and uh, for you, the, for you, those of you that have followed us here in this webinars, you have also followed this development. Uh, today, I'm happy to invite Silvana Muschella, who is CEO of Trust IT and also chair of the second EOS High Level Expert Group, uh, to present some of the results and findings from the uh, uh, High Level Expert Group, and uh, which I also have been working together with the EOS Pilot Project. And uh, I hope uh, several of you uh, have seen and contributed to the survey that the high level expert uh, group uh, used the EOS platform to, to conduct. So during this session, uh, I will soon give the word to Silvana, but I tell you that if you hover a bit over the screen, you will find that there is a chat where you can put questions and we will answer them afterwards. And I can also, if you raise a hand in the, uh, I, in, in the, in the attendance window there, if you find it, uh, I can give you actually uh, availability to talk and ask questions uh, in live uh, to Silvana. So, uh, but uh, let's now go to the talk. And uh, are you ready, Silvana? I give the word to you. Welcome. Lovely pair. Thank you very much. I hope you can all hear me loud and clear. Uh, so as Pear said, and thank you for the opportunity to let us zoom in, uh, basically on the experience from the EOS Gage Leg around the open consultation that was issued at the end of the June summit, uh, 11th of June this uh, in Brussels this year and thanks to EOS Pilot we then put on a series of questions around recommendations but also we were asked all stakeholders to comment around the rules of participation. So this presentation today dives into some of the feedback around the principal comments and topics that were introduced as part of the consultation platform. Uh, so without further ado, and I hope this can move. The history, you've seen this phrase clearly from the European Commission communication final document around the European, the European Cloud Initiative two years ago. Two years on, this seems to be, be becoming a reality in terms of offering 1.7 million European researchers and professionals a, an ecosystem where there's a place for storage, management, analysis, reuse of research data across borders and scientific disciplines. Now, I don't want to be provocative with the question, but it's always good to just have a reminder of why this is relevant. I'm not going to go through all the bullet list, but the integration, consolidation and federation, these key words of existing research infrastructures come up again and again, and these are the main five features of why EOSC is relevant today. But I always like the punchline in, the, in here that you will see in the final report, it was in the interim as well, where it talks about an EOSC of tomorrow and puts in the centerpiece, the people, data, services, training, publications, projects, and organizations. And I've added at the end, how this, the EOSC is an opportunity for research infrastructures specifically, and Eric's and Esprit's, to influence. Now, this is something that came out during ICRI 2018. And so this is something that's going to come up also during today's presentation. And also uh, research infrastructures play in also a prominent role, role during the stakeholders forum, which again, we go back to opportunity. If the investment made in the research infrastructures today are engaging in EOSC, and are providing a fantastic value proposition of why they should be doing what they're doing in, a, in, an, in the EOS environment, it will succeed. And with this, it needs to be an inclusive effort from everybody to get everybody involved and to clearly identify the opportunities. So the context, I know many of you are probably familiar with the EOS pilot project, which 
but as just a quick reminder of those of you who are not familiar with it, it closes in next year, funded under DGRTD, and it supports precisely the actual phrasing of it, a pilot to go towards AOSC, and it supports the first phase of the development of this. It has a series of different features that it looks at, primarily it looks on proposing a governance framework. There are 15 science demonstrators, and it engages with a broad range of stakeholders. In parallel to the AOS pilot project, the commission uh, the, put together the second AOS high level expert group made up of 10 members. And we had a mandate from the EC to support primarily the rules of participation of AOS and the interim and final report, as well as the consultation platform and what we're going to look at today, look at this in significant detail, advise the EC around actions on governance and financing, and elaborate towards uh, stakeholders agree conclusions from the AOSC summit. So the URL you can see at the top where the interim report can be downloaded. And then on the 11th of June, the open consultation was open where we received very pragmatic uh, comments and feedback where the lessons learned were around data quality, quality of services, shared security model, business models, and the user experience. So I'd like to say thank you uh, to the following organizations, EU projects, universities, and alliances who contributed to the open consultation platform. The group studied the comments in great detail and fed them individually into the final and weave them into the final report under the different sections as well as with the revised recommendations. So if you see below we're going to have a an overview of the main features that supported the rules of participation and a central point of discussion in the interim AOS report was around is around data quality and two mechanisms were envisaged as central to this purpose. One was fair principles related to a minimum amount of metadata introduced and that the quality is related to peer review and collective filtering. What we've put in these slides you'll see is the batting of the feedback from some of the comments or from the open consultation that you can obviously read for yourself. But as a recommendation, it was one of the top three recommendations for one of our implementations was to build a workforce able to execute the vision, ensuring data stewards, data and infrastructure technologists and scientific data experts are trained and supported. The second feature in the quality of in the um, consultation platform regarding the rules was around the quality of service and these were around defining AOS quality of standards, quality of service standards, but to ensure that they were separate from all the elements making up the ecosystem. So data, data access services and software were all considered separately, but a systemic perspective was introduced to develop this trustable ecosystem. And again, this was one of the top three recommendations um, to introduce uh, as part of the, the final setup of, of recommendations and you have your verbatim there. Um, another crucial passage that emerged from the HLEG's work was around the security and this is especially relevant for research infrastructure specifically to operate within a framework of a shared security model um, and then you have open consultation feedback here. In the online uh, platform, this was the area that received the most comments and there was a strong debate around this. While rapid fair rollout is expected, the comments received, you could see that the researchers are still looking for pragmatic answers to uh, solve their security issues, which will obviously be addressed at an AOS governance level. 
something that came up during the consultation feedback that was also iterated during ICRI 2018 uh, last month was the, in trying to develop the, a strong synergy with the cybersecurity competence centers that will be in operation in Europe from 2019 onwards. There's a dedicated section within the interim and final report around the EOSC business models. You might know, remember we introduced three that we'll see uh, in a moment. This again was a top three recommendation to promote the development of services as independent, interoperable and exchangeable and building blocks to foster future accreditation of innovative or efficient alternatives. Something that is being discussed in parallel, I know, by other different groups. I know that science business in its working group where they have industry members involved are tackling the issue of industry and the private sector. And this is certainly something that has to be key in the evolution of AOSC uh, if, if, during the implementation phase. And so we've gone on to, under, to, to actually introduce a recommendation on uh, how the private sector can play a role uh, within the AOSC in, uh, in the coming months. Going back to the business model where three different uh, solutions were introduced of a direct support model, um, the cloud coin model, we put this as sometimes that can be re referred to as vouchers and a hybrid model which would be a combination of both the direct support and cloud coin model. In terms of the user experience, and this is something I know that the member states have highlighted significantly to discuss how the AOS is supporting a user-centered approach. And clearly with the launch, it's important that AOS keeps the researcher at the center in terms of practical details of implementation. The features around incentives and rewards for researchers who publish their data uh, is key. And as a recommendation, we also introduced the part of having ground incentives by open and transparent open science metrics and indicators. And we're now fully aware that the work over the next two years specifically as well with the Open Science Policy Platform Working Group, we'll be looking at that in, uh, in greater detail as well. What we did also as a basis of the consultation and comments that came in from the stakeholders was relook at the list of the potential working groups that had been introduced in the interim. And we came up with the first list Please bear in mind, these are not clearly uh, vouched for or final or confirmed. They're ideas that we feel would merit a working group being created around it. Some of them clearly are uh, taken forward from also the results from the staff working document and the AOSC pilot different deliverables. But those in blue, are those that have come out as on the basis from the consultation platform which are on open standards in service development and seamless deployment, global scientific research, quality management of data and monitoring and indicators. So if do bear in mind that we know every European project produces a series of different deliverables and reports um, some many, some less, but these are a few produced from our pilot, which would merit a read because they're also coupled with the work that the AOS gauge leg have also done and have tapped into to also complement the final report that comes out. Now, as a punchline, and I mentioned this at the beginning, the engagement of the research infrastructures is vital. Uh, and as we know, a series of projects have been funded under the Infra AOSC 
um, starting probably in quarter one, 2019. And a provocative point could be that they deliver a common position statement on how and on what the value proposition is going to be for them with it working within AOSC, have this as a mandatory activity as part of, as one of their KPIs and their outputs of their project and answering the question, why should I do this in AOSC rather than in my community now and what's the actual added value? And I think these are considerations that should be on the board, on the table, discussed from day one at the kickoff meetings during these cluster projects, because it obviously it will help the ongoing AOSC initiatives. Uh, and I'm, when AOS pilot finishes, clearly AOSC hub comes to mind, the work going on in e Infra Central and open air. And it's important that everything comes together and there's engagement happening. So if you remember the recommendations in the interim, which we've used the same for the final, were divided into three and they were called implementation, engagement and steering. Um, and so there, there were a set that were produced in the interim and we've gone and taken them forward for the final as well. Just to dip in to the top rated and the least rated in terms of the interim report uh, implement, uh, recommendations now, not clearly the final ones. And the top was around defining AOSC interoperability standards. The least rated was around resource uh, allocation. The top and least for engagement was the creating career enhancing incentives for researchers. And this has been elaborated slightly um, in terms of those who clearly are lodging high quality curated data, sharing the data services to peers, developing open source software and services um, and make the AOSCA portal to those incentives. The least rated was in terms of the international developments. Now, a sneak preview to what's new in the, uh, um, in the final report. So I think it's probably the, well, not, I'm not saying it's the first time, but having an open consultation worked uh, in terms of people sitting there from the different stakeholder communities and reflected their own parts in, in the re responses. Uh, for an, an example would be the parts around the community of the social sciences came back and questioned what had been written around the GDPR section and personal data. And this is an area subject to much discussion. And we re looked at that because social sciences deals with lots of personal data. So we need to be able to say how that's going to be reflected in the AOS going forward. The implementation recommendations have gone up from 12 to 17, but and as, a, as a result of feedback that's come back from the stakeholders, but also the developments and the ongoing evolution of what's happening within the AOSC portal, which will be also launched at the end of November. And discussions amongst the players working on that has meant that some of the, some of the comments that have come back for the rules of participation clearly sit within the remit of what, could, what should be on the portal and, and how that's then reflected. And at the same time, we've wanted to add recommendations for implementation under skills, monitoring and policy. We've tried to be a bit more prescriptive also in the provisions around describing the minimum viable ecosystem in the final report and by putting in also how industry can play a role uh, around the AOS portal has been considered. The defining rules of participation that enforce 
an open application programming interface and interchange standards is something that came up more than once. So we decided to turn that into a fully fledged recommendation and that the uh, infrastructure would support FAIR as well as general researcher use of AOSC, ensuring a proper balance between multiple solutions and the opportunity to promote shared methodologies together with general reference models. Now this is, the final report is now under final review at the commission with a final proofread and it will be delivered at the launch on the 23rd of November. I don't know, well, I've missed, put this in the wrong place, but this was for steering uh, the top rated uh, recommendation, um, ensuring that the working group structures that we saw in the previous uh, presentation um, and the other advisory structures cover for the executive board the latest scientific and organizational trends and novel ideas. So some stats of who contributed to the open consultation. As expected, academia and research is the most present community, but the stakeholders involved also included private uh, organizations, the infrastructure projects, as well as individuals. And we were pleased with a European-wide response. Uh, here were some top figures, but uh, stakeholders did come in from 18 EU member states. So come, uh, some concluding remarks that uh, I've mentioned before. So the research infrastructures, Esprit's ERICs, are expected to play a central role in AOSC, where cross-use of research infrastructures of best practices are demonstrated. And I think this is a feature that's come up closely to be, to be tackled as part of the uh, Stakeholders Forum event. And this could be closely monitored clearly by funding agencies. The launch of AOSC in November will leave room for manoeuvring around the key ingredients. So it's a not to be missed opportunity for key players. And the user-centered experience uh, is key, which has to be organically approached. And the flexible business models and rewarding schemes to be filled, validated, and that's already being seen in quarter four in some initiatives already ongoing. Uh, but will definitely be there under the new projects that are funded uh, under quarter one in 2019. And with that, um, I see there are some questions here and just a registration link for those of you who haven't yet registered to the stakeholders forum. Um, Time's ticking on. Remember the dates are the 21st and the 22nd of September with the launch then the day after on the 23rd. So we think that this is a good uh, platform to then leave the opening of supporting the EOSC executive board and governance structure going forward and hopefully the outputs and the booklet that's then produced at the event, the white paper that comes out after, the final report of both expert groups, the AOSC HLEG and the Fair Data expert group should all be elements in addition to clearly all the other documents and reports out there uh, that will be the building blocks to create the AOSC governance structure and boards moving forward. So with that, my presentation is over. Thank you very much.